The humble domestic chick, which is not traditionally considered a champion of mental life, is in fact an interesting model for investigating the animal mind. The chicks are precocial, which means that as soon as they hatch, they are quite mature and mobile. So in the lab, we can precisely control the chick's sensory and motor experience and observe how this affects their behavior. Also, chicks show an amazing form of learning called filial imprinting. Very young chicks quickly learn to recognize an object if they are placed near to it for a while, and then they will try desperately to stay close to it. Obviously, this would normally be the mother hen, but in our experiment, we took advantage of the fact that imprinting can occur even with inanimate objects like simple colored cylinders. Here is a simple example. The chick is confined in a transparent pen and can see the imprinting object moving and disappearing behind one or other of two identical opaque screens. An opaque partition is placed in front of the transparent container. After a delay, during which the chick has to maintain in memory the position of the imprinting object, it is free to search. Chicks are very good at this task, even with delays as long as 60 seconds. Their performances are comparable to those of primates. We used a similar setup to see if chicks had an understanding of some basic properties such as size or shape and the way in which they could affect the visual occlusion of other objects. Some chicks were imprinted on a tall object and others on a wide one. And during tests, the chick was placed in a transparent holding box and was able to see the object moving along a straight midline towards the two identical screens. Their view was then obscured and the imprinting object was removed. The screens were replaced with two that were no longer identical. For example, the height or width was changed so that only one screen was large enough for the imprinting object to be hidden behind it. The partition was then removed and the chick was free to search for the object. Chicks typically choose to search only behind the screen that could hide the object. So we found that chicks have very sophisticated abilities concerning physical objects and the properties of occlusion. They seem to be born with a sort of um, intuitive physics. We use the same technique to explore chick's abilities to perform simple addition and subtraction with small numbers. We knew from previous experiments that when chicks have been imprinted on artificial objects like these ones, they prefer to approach groups with more rather than fewer objects. Let's look at a simple example. Chicks are represented with an object which disappears behind a screen on the right and then with a series of objects that disappear behind a screen on the left. One object, two objects, three objects and four. We have had addition up to this point. Now we try some subtraction. One object is moved from the left to the right and then another one moves from the left to the right. So at this point, we would expect that chick will choose the screen on the right side, and it does. But perhaps this was only because that was the last screen where it saw an object go. This can be easily checked for that. Come back to the addition. And this time, we'll only move one object from the left to the right. So the expectation would be that the chick would choose the screen on the left side. And this is exactly what chicks do. So this shows that chicks are able to carry out simple mental arithmetic, performing addition and subtraction with small numbers. Chicks also show good understanding of counting. For example, that number four 
comes after number three and before number five. Uh, for example, different group of chicks were trained to feed from, say, the third, the fourth, or the sixth container in a series of ten. And chicks were able to identify the correct container, whatever the length of the row. But were chicks using the number or simply the distance from the starting point to the correct food container? To check for this, the distance between the balls was changed. Now the second ball is where the fourth ball used to be, and the fourth is much farther away. So if the chick is using distance to solve the problem, it should choose the second and not the fourth container. However, results show that chicks choose the correct serial number and not simply the distance. Chicks number cognition also illustrates nicely the lateralization of the brain Leslie Rogers described, namely that the left and the right side of the brain perform different functions exactly as in human beings. In one study, we train chicks to feed only from the third out of seven food containers whose position in a circular arena was changed throughout the testing trials. The chicks learned the problem, but they consistently showed a strange stereotype behavior while counting. They always moved from left to right even though the third ball was not close to that end of the line of balls. So we decided to investigate this curious phenomenon in a simple experiment. When the bird is placed in front of a line of 16 identical positions and food was only placed under the same position, say the fourth, chicks learn the task very easily. Then, at testing, when we rotate the line of balls, which position is the bird going to regard as correct? The fourth from the left or the fourth from the right? They choose systematically the fourth from the left. The existence of a mental line of number that extends from left to right is very well known in humans. However, this is usually explained as a result of writing and reading habits. And this is something that our chicks obviously cannot do. But it seems more likely that in the brains of these little chicks, like in human beings, visual attention is preferentially directed to the left because of the selective activation of the right hemisphere. So asymmetries of attention are not uniquely human characteristics that underlie an allegedly superior cognitive ability of human beings. Of all the birds, parrots are perhaps best known for their intelligence. Their resemblance to humans certainly enhances their reputation. They're capable of copying human speech, and like us, they have opposable thumbs which they can use to grasp objects. And when they do grasp and manipulate objects, they tend to do so with one hand over the other. And when presented with a novel problem, such as the string pull task you can see here, parrots show remarkable cognitive abilities. In many instances, individuals can solve the task on their first encounter, providing an example of insight. It seems that they have an understanding of the causal relationship between the food, the string and themselves, and the birds look at the problem and solve the task and find a solution without even interacting with it. Several themes emerge from this short film. Birds are evidently capable of some impressive cognitive feats, but it seems that their cognitive ability is linked to the structure of their brain. Really clever animals draw on the specialised processing that occurs in either hemisphere of their brain. Pandanus tool production, for example, is lateralised in crows. Chicks count from left to right, and strongly lateralised parrots excel in the string pull problem. So despite the divergent evolutionary pathways between humans and other animals, all of us share a bilateral brain structure, which seems to be the ticket to our cognitive success.
providing an example of insight. It is suggests that they understand the causal relationship between the food, the string, and my head. <laughs> that was really close. Just even drop that window. Did he buzz you or did he like his his bark? No, no, I felt him in my head. It was really close. <laughs>